Tonight on the local game, we'll take a look at the promotional playoff, plus some upsetting results away from home in the first leg of the semi-finals. And joining us on the show as well is Ben Trigari, the author of Antwoord, which is out now, available in all your bookstores. That's coming up in today's episode of The Local Game. Welcome to The Local Game. It is a big show here today, episode 28, the last of this format because next week is the grand final show. Let's welcome in this week, Alessio Karachi. Good to have you back, mate. Yeah, good to be here again. I've been a big week of finals football the last couple of weeks. I've been involved, you've been involved. So yep. it's good to be here, the, the last in-person show, just the two of us before big one next week yeah the last uh, the last one of the two of us very excited lots to talk about as well lots of big results from the weekend um and uh, got to dissect it all also begins to be coming up a bit later on um but first of all big thank you to our sponsors of the grand final show shine music and entertainment the home of tom and rose electric girl dance electric and Tommy Tequila, also Macron Sports Hub Adelaide. Get your gear for 2025 ready. Head out and talk to Macron Sports Hub Adelaide today. 35 Sterling, where you can get your great coffee, great food, and awesome service down there in Thebedon, 35 Sterling Street, Thebedon, and AV Plus. Your audio experts, get in touch with them today for everything audio for your next corporate event. Well, next week is all going to happen. A big show, big interviews. We're going to be talking to the NPL Grand Finalists, uh, WNPL Grand Finalists, will it be Salisbury Inter, will it be West Adelaide? We'll find out this weekend. Um, also some other big special guests and uh, things happening as well on that day. We're gonna be dissecting it all. I'm very excited. Yeah, I mean, special event as well, big audience. Hopefully we'll get as well a lot of family and friends as well. And <laughs> yeah. hopefully maybe we'll see a bit, a bit of rivalry in the crowd. Maybe they'll sit on different sides of the, of the benches, but Otherwise, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a great event. Yeah, there will be representatives from each uh, from some of the clubs as well. So, we might hear some boos when we mention certain teams and names. Who knows? But uh, that's going to be recorded next week, and you'll be able to watch it on Thursday night. A special one-hour edition, all the co-hosts together. A big special episode, um, and also on Channel Forty Four at a special time of five thirty Friday night. We did it on purpose so you can watch it on Friday night, Channel Forty Four, ahead of the NPL Grand Final, and also nine AM. Saturday morning, it's replayed on Channel 44. So you can wake up early, watch that game, and get to the State League. So there we go. Well, anyway, let's head into today's episode. The hot topics for today, we have three big ones. First of all, under 23s, there's four South Australian boys all included in uh, in the next uh, under 23s camp. And that is Ethan Cox, Yaya Dukuli, Panash Madanha, Ethan Alagic, four young players. Great performance, so uh, I look forward to seeing him under the 23s again. Yeah, I mean, it's a few players as well that are, have had a bit of a hiatus from the national teams, especially Ayo Dekuli and Ethan Alligish might be one of the first squads for both of them, mm. or first in a while. So it just goes to show that the form they're having in pre-season, if the Australia Cup especially, I mean, Ayo Dekuli had a, a great game against Blacktown, especially in that game. Ethan Alligish as well, finding his way into that midfield as they're getting a bit older. Maybe he's got more opportunities coming this season. But yeah, it's obviously good to see the, the strong talent we have here in SA. Yeah, absolutely. Well, can't wait for that. Let's talk about South Australian talent once again. Uh, Nestorio Nkunda, he is doing phenomenal stuff already for uh, Bayern Munich. Scored two goals in the fourth division for their uh, the second team. So their reserves team plays in the fourth division over in, um, in Germany. He's already scored two goals. Some people are already saying that he's already too good for the second, second team, but... Um, all jokes aside, though, he's doing very well in his first game. Yeah, I mean, this is his first competitive match. Mm. Uh, I think it might be at a, I think that the whole league is maybe amateur, most of the other teams, if, if they're not reserve teams of the professional clubs. But, yeah, it's good to see that he's dominating at that level. I mean, they're all against men as well, mm. and they're European <coughs> players as well. So I think the calibre there is, obviously, they've had all, most of those teams have had a good um, upbringing as well. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't make the bench the, the day after. I think that's something usually we see here where you, oh, you might get asked, oh, I play 60 minutes reserves, then you bench after. But... Unfortunately, he didn't get that treatment there, but I'm sure it won't be long until we see him. No, still early days, but uh, yeah, we never know what can happen with Nestori Irunkunda. Very excited to see uh, how he continues to go there. But also, moving on to another South Australian talent, a couple of talents, but this is all in regards to the A-League women. This year, there's a couple of moves that we've seen already happening. Uh, the first one is uh, Marco Matriciani. We mentioned it a little while ago. It's announced finally now that he's going to be the new coach for Melbourne City. Big move for him, and his first uh, thing to do for him is the uh, Asian Champions League. Yeah, one of the first signings I'm sure he had a hand in was also signing Emilia Murray, a good SA talent from here as well. So that's a big move from them, and they're going to obviously have uh, 
a couple of trophies to compete for, and that's what he said in his interview that he's aiming for all of them. He's a coach that aims to go on all fronts at, um, during the whole year as well, as we've seen with Campbelltown this year. So I'm sure he's going to do well at Melbourne City as well. Also, another move that we'll mention as well for A League women is Tanae Morris. She's going to uh, Brisbane Raw. Yeah, well, the rise of Tanae Morris in the last couple of months and weeks has been outstanding. I mean, SA Talent, who's playing for Adelaide Uni in the WNPL this year and the last couple of years, previously the NTC system. So Adelaide United might have missed a beat there and not signing her. But Brisbane Raw have taken the opportunity as she's gone to the down to 20 uh, competition with the women's as well. So they've obviously seen that talent in the last couple of weeks, scored on her debut for the young Matildas. So uh, a team snapped that up early in the transfer window and now, and now we can see what she can do on the women's stage. Absolutely. We can't wait to see what she does over there in Brisbane. Um, great opportunity to get into the um, A-League women. All right, well, that's a uh, great transition because her club uni played on the weekend as well. Let's move into the women's football from the weekend. The results, the promotional playoff, Adelaide Uni, they did play in that playoff against Modbury Vista, a big game down there. Unfortunately for Vista, they had a great season in the WSL, just couldn't quite get the win in that most important game of the season um, in against Uni. Uni have uh, saved their spot in the WNPL. Yeah, well, it's a repeat of last year. At least the score lines are a lot closer. It goes to show the difference in those two leagues is getting closer and closer and maybe third time lucky next year Bobby Vista I think if they have a good run in the state league I think they can take it out themselves all the way at the top well done to uni for getting the win in that one um, let's have a look at the WNPL results as well two big games on the weekend one elimination final and in that elimination final Football SA NTC ended the road for them against uh, West Torrens Bikella a 3-1 loss a big game um, all, all, three go- all four goals sorry, scored in the opening uh, in the opening 45 minutes as well. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're grand finals from last year, Football SA and TC, and they've got a great young squad there. But unfortunately, at the moment, West Times Bacala having a year to remember, a couple of good signings mid-year, and their form's picked up. And now at the right time of the season, they've gone past one uh, week of finals, and they're going to have a good run that takes them all the way to September, I reckon. Yeah, absolutely. And the other final as well, which is not the elimination final, but uh, the, whoever wins that, goes um, on to another game against uh, West Adelaide and that uh, whoever loses has a second chance. So Adelaide Comets, they lost in this fixture 1-0 against uh, Salisbury Inter. They're going to be facing, um, they will be facing West Torrance Bacala next week. But a big win for Salisbury Inter now. They can now get uh, only one win away now from making the grand final. Yeah, so it's kind of like the AFL with a prelim kind of thing where you play one team, Mm. takes you all the way to the semi-final and if you win that you go straight to the final, have a week off, etc. But they got underway early. One minute, they scored the first goal, Jess Signorello, for Salisbury Inter. So a player that's been there the last couple of years as well, and they look like they're doing quite well. So to get the game underway that early, it probably sprung Comets, and uh, it's going to make them have to do better next week, Comets, to try and make the grand final themselves. Absolutely. Let's take a look, a quick look at those fixtures coming up this weekend as well. Uh, Adelaide Comets going to be hosting uh, West Torrens Bacala, 12.30 kickoff um, in that one. So whoever loses is out of the competition. Whoever wins will be taken on in this, uh, the winner of, sorry, the loser of either West Adelaide or Salisbury Inter. So West Adelaide, Salisbury Inter, three o'clock kickoff. Um, whoever wins gets another week off. So um, if West Adelaide win again, they get the second week off. So it's going to be a bit bit of a hard one because you have a week. You think as a, as a first team, if Tina finishes top, you get two weeks off if you make the grand final instantly. So week off in the first round, then you play and then a week off and then back into the grand final. It's going to be a tough ask for West Adelaide, but they did play against um, Campbelltown City to keep their, their legs um, going on the weekend as well. So Yeah, I think that was a good, a good uh, test as well to see what the top team in the State League can do against the team who come top in the WNPL. Probably a bit further away than maybe what we expected, but obviously Campbelltown City have been partying for weeks after winning mm. that title. But another interesting thing was that the fixture times for those two are 12.30 and a 3 o'clock. So maybe some of the girls would stay after and see who they're playing the week after. Maybe the coaches, I'm sure, definitely would. Definitely. But that's a good, uh, interesting fixture. Yeah, we'll be in all down at Service FM Stadium. Don't go anywhere now. We're going to talk state leagues very soon. This is the local game back on the other side.
Welcome back to the local game. Well, uh, big thanks to our sponsors, Macron Sports Hub, Adelaide, Shy Music and Entertainment, AV Plus, and also 35 Sterling. That's where we're hosting it next week, the grand final show. Yes, well, let's take a look at the first uh, the first state league. So the state league won results from the weekend. It was the first leg of the semi-finals. Well, Salisbury United, they had a, a tough one at home, a 3-1 loss to West Torrens Bacala, but uh, Blue Eagles, a 1-0 win at home to Playford City, um, a massive win for, for Blue Eagles as well at home, because next week they're gonna be away from home. Never easy playing at Playford. Uh, let's take a look at the, the return fixtures as well for next week. This is um, a big one for Playford now. They have to win. They're lucky um, in, in their sense that away goals don't count because they didn't have any on the weekend. Yeah, I mean, we, I watched that game as well, uh, some of the replay with David Grant there on commentary. And, of course, Ricardo De Silva, he's the king of September. He just gets any team promoted and he's put a big stake uh, forward for Blue Eagles after last week as well, getting three assists and a goal. Yeah, this incredible. week getting another goal himself. So... I'm sure he's one of the, the best players in September and they're going to hope that can continue this week against Playford away, one of the toughest away places to go in this league and in the state. Um, but I was on, obviously, the Salisbury United and Bacala game with Anthony Taylor and it was, just, it was unfortunate. Even Matthew Gaston in his post-game report said that it was probably one of their poorest games of the year. The surface didn't really help them, but Bacala played it like a carpet. Um, they have a really good home record there as well, Salisbury. Uh, doing my stats in 35 games, they had won 25 and drawn 5. Yeah, Only lost... Three this year and two in 2022, and that's it from the last three years. Uh, so unfortunately, they added to that um, with another loss on the weekend. But as we said in the commentary, the cream rises to the top. There's a reason that Bacala were top of the league, and that attacking talent they have is just unbelievable. Soy Sakani, again, didn't get in the goals in the assists, but if you watch that game, I'm sure he's man of the match. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, so if Salisbury do make it three, then it will be a promotional playoff in the grand final. And that will be very exciting to see. Uh, let's take a look at the State League 2 now as well. Big results happened there in the State League 2. LA Uni, unfortunately, uh, a 1-0 loss at home to Cove FC um, and Modbury Vista at home. A 2-0 win over league leaders Pontian Eagles. Um, and the return fixtures this weekend, Pontian Eagles will be playing at home. They're already comfortable, as I mentioned, like with Bacala. They're, they'll be probably comfortable. They've already got their place in State League 1 next year. But uh, we'll see what happens there. Uni had a great start to the season. They're just struggling now. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate for them. They've held off a, a co-side that has scored a lot of goals this year and just in the 91st minute. Tom Fogley going. It looked like it was a bit of a, a, a tough battle as well. A couple of bookings there. A red card there to Peter Mercurio as well. But otherwise, uh, Cove uh, saw a video they put out this week. So they're really hoping they can have a finals campaign to remember and make the grand final at least. But on the other side, Robbie Visto, as you said, that battle they have with Pontian is, is a really tough one. Played him in the last game of the season, almost pipped him to uh, to a game there at their home ground, Pontian. But a couple of players, so Vista, Cooper Wegner, second top scorer in the league, hat trick last week, uh, early goal this week, mm. and then of course their captain, State League Two Player of the week, Year last year, Josh Coyne, getting a goal as well. So good for Moby Vista, and they're going to hope to spoil the party there at the Alumba Drive Reserve. All right, let's head into my chat. Earlier in the week, I caught up with Vince Rigari as his book launch only yesterday on Wednesday. Ange Ball, make sure you get that book, get a copy and start reading it. It's a fantastic story. But here is a chat when I caught up with him earlier. I'm here with Sydney Morning Herald journalist and also the author of Ange Ball, Vince Rigari. Mate, con uh, congratulations on the book and um, great to have you on board today. Johnny, thanks for having me, mate. Appreciate it. Always good to talk football with a fellow South Australian. Yeah, enough of South Australia. It's good uh, that you mentioned that as well. You grew up here in South Australia and now work in Sydney, but... Um, before we talk about the, the book itself, but football in general, what was it like being part of football in South Australia and now working over in Sydney and being amongst football daily? Oh, look, uh, I loved, you know, growing up in, in Adelaide, uh, my uncle taking me to uh, High Marsh for Adelaide City games when I was young and then Adelaide United coming into, um, you know, the A-League sort of changed everything, um, some of my most you know, important memories when I was a kid of football were, were all in South Australia. I, I left pretty early, though, when I was 17. But um, tell you what, South Australians in the football industry, even in Sydney, we're, we're everywhere. Uh, in the Socceroos, in the Matildas, in the administrative ranks. Uh, honestly, you can't, uh, you, you know, you don't have to go too far to find another crow eater in football, which is good. And I'm uh, very proud to be flying the flag in journalism. No, you're doing a good job of it as well. Um, you went to the World Cup um, back in 2022 for the, 
the men you followed the Matildas around in South uh, in Australia as well. Some of, what were some of your favourite experiences uh, doing that? Because that would have been unreal. I, I saw you bumped into Jared Walsh as well over there in Qatar. Yeah, yeah, mate. Those two tournaments are uh, unbelievable. Anytime uh, Australia wins a game at a World Cup, men's or women's, it's hard to beat. Uh, there's no feeling like it. Um, Qatar was incredible just to see you know, the run we went on, but um, watching the whole country light up during the Women's World Cup last year was, was unbelievable. Um, particularly going to see a couple of different cities throughout as well. You could tell World Cup fever was everywhere. Football fever was everywhere. Um, I'm really lucky to have been at those two tournaments, that's for sure. The, now you've written a book. It's, it's out. It's called Ange Ball. Um, what was the inspiration for you to write this book about Ange um, and uh, his, his journey through, uh, through, through football? Uh, I was pretty fortunate in that um, the, uh, the opportunity sort of came to me in a roundabout way through the publisher. I hadn't really thought too much about um, writing any books, really. I, I've always wanted to write a book about football, but I hadn't had too many specific thoughts about what I was going to do until sort of the stars aligned, in a sense, with this publisher who I've, I've written the book with. Um, we uh, They were doing a presentation in our offices at the Sydney Morning Herald on the morning that Ange got confirmed as Spurs manager. Um, I missed the the presentation. They were just talking to journos about, you know, here's who we are. If you want to write a book, this is the process. This is what we're looking for, etc. I missed it all because I was uh, busy writing stories about Ange being confirmed at Spurs. But I caught up with the bloke who did it afterwards in our work kitchen. Um, and we just got to talking about, about football and Ange um, and everything. And uh, a couple of weeks later, they made an offer to write the book, which was incredible. Um, and then pretty quickly in my head, I realized, you know, wow, what a great opportunity to just chronicle the journey of one of Australia's great sporting figures, um, you know, review, I guess, the last six, seven years in particular since he left Australia in controversial circumstances, and then all the stuff he's done since in Japan, in Scotland, um, you know, and now in, in, in Tottenham Hotspur, Um I figured someone was going to write a book about him uh, and I thought I'd be pretty angry if I woke up one day, went to a bookshop and someone else had done it. So I was, you know, took the opportunity in front of me and, uh, and gave it everything. Well, you've, you've been following his journey for a long time, obviously through the A-League as well when you're covering that very closely when he was there um, at Brisbane Raw and the likes. But what was that? What were some of your favourite experiences during that period of, uh, of even the Socceroos time when you were following them around. What's some of your favourite Ange experiences that you got to experience? Uh, I've been pretty lucky. Like, So I had first sort of um, dealt with him when I was in South East Queensland studying and beginning to work as a journalist. So I went to both of the Brisbane Raw grand finals in the A-League, which were, yeah. oh, wow. I mean, absolutely unbelievable. If you think about the way those two games went with with uh, you know a penalty shootout in one and then a last-minute winner in the other with that uh, Bessart Barisha penalty with the was it a foul was it not a foul with Liam Miller so those two alone uh, spectacular but then you know to have also covered some games not the final of the Asian Cup in 2015 when we won it was um, spectacular and then I was really lucky with my previous job with Australian Associated Press AAP to cover the Socceroos on the road um, in places like Saudi Arabia and uh Japan and uh, uh, Iran. Iran was special because that was the game against Iraq when he brought in the back three for the first time, um, which sort of set off the beginning of the end for Ange as the Socceroos coach. But what was special about that was a couple of days before the game, uh, Ange asked all the journos to gather at the team hotel and he gave us a bit of a talking um, through of what he was going to do with his tactics, basically. He sat us down... There was a presentation. All the information was embargoed, so we couldn't go on and report about it, but it was just for our knowledge to understand what he was doing and why he was doing it with the team. So I thought back then, we're talking at the start of 2017, I thought, wow, what a special moment this is that the national team boss um, has sat us down and explained to us why he's doing something tactically with the team. Um, but it's even more special now when you consider just how, how much he's growing uh, in his reputation globally, um, you know, those sort of things don't happen often in football. Um, so I was, yeah, it was really cool to be a part of that. And that's, I've, I've put that in the book as well when I explain sort of the circumstances around uh, why he left Australia the way he did and when he 
did just before that World Cup in, in 2018. Um, it was a, it was a difficult time. I don't know how much you remember about it, Johnny, but the, watching the Socceroos at that time was like, you don't know what you're going to get. You know, they, the, it was it was very uncomfortable playing with the system where you're you're right. You didn't have a right back. At sometimes it was buddy Matthew Lecky playing as the yeah. as the right wing back, and he had to cover the whole wing. It was uh, it was it was tough to watch as a fan. That's for sure. It was it was tough, but um, to see what he's done since then as well, he's he's gone off and done wonders around the world. Now the world knows who Ange Postecoglou is, um, but you went over to England as well um, and followed him a little bit closely just while writing this book. What was that experience like to go see him at the Spurs um, during his time and what kind of things did you get to see? Yeah, it was, uh, for me, bucket list stuff because I'd never gone and watched a Premier League game before. Uh, so I spent three oh, wow. weeks um, in London last year. Uh, I watched Spurs beat uh, Liverpool uh, at home in that game with the VAR controversy. Um, I'm sure everyone remembers that. But they think it was like a 100th minute winner by Spurs so to watch the stadium just sort of react to that and like serenade Ange afterwards with a with a rendition of Angels of course they've rewritten the, the lyrics awesome. there to tribute uh, to Ange which was really cool so I got to see that and then I got to see um, them play at Luton Town at Kenilworth Road which was a, a pretty hard fought win but you know another different stadium old stadium and just different atmosphere with, with Tottenham as the travelling fans as well and then in between those two games Uh, I spent a day at their training facility, Um, so I watched them train in the morning, Um, got a bit of a tour of the place. Uh, uh, I've never seen anything like it, Johnny. Like, It's got everything you think a football club could possibly need, and then a few other things that you would never thought a football club would need, they've got them there as well. It's unreal. Um, And I was lucky enough to sit down with Ange as well for... For an hour, and you know, talk about a few things um, you know that have happened in his career, his time in Australia, uh, and of course the the new project he's got his hands on right now. So, um, again, really, really lucky to have had those opportunities as well. I'm sure to read those down in, in the book would be uh, incredible. I can't wait to sit down and finally open up the book. Um, it's going to be exciting to read, um, especially from an Australian perspective, because you followed him all the way through. Someone that's like a, a, a Scottish fan or an English fan have only literally just worked out who Ange was after he's gone over there. But that Australian perspective is obviously going to add a lot more to the book, and I'm sure the English fans are going to really enjoy uh, being able to read read this book. What's one of your favourite moments that you've actually been able to write into the book? It's a bit hard to choose because you know all, all the different parts of the book. I understand now that they're they're a bit like your babies. You know, you don't want to pick your favourite child, sort of thing. But I do have to say, um, a couple of guys I know f- um, from the football industry really well, um, Ben Coonan and, and Richard Bayless. So Ben Coonan used to be the um, the Socceroos uh, video and content guy. And Richard Bayless, of course, uh, presenter with Fox, uh, Optus. Uh, back in 2017, those guys were shooting a, a documentary they were planning uh, on basically behind the scenes with the Socceroos during the World Cup qualification campaign um, with Ange. And they shot a lot of content um, for this documentary, including uh, pre-match team talks, halftime team talks, uh, and some other stuff as well. Um, That documentary never got off the ground because, of course, Ange left FFA um, in late 2017, didn't take him to the World Cup. And so FFA decided to abandon that documentary. So a lot of this stuff has just been sitting there um, with with no no real practical use. I know Ben's used parts of um, one of the speeches that Ange did, which is the speech where he says, enjoy your lunch. If anyone doesn't know what that uh, reference means, just Google it and it'll come up. It was one of the great um, speeches. Uh, but the good thing for me is for this book, those guys have, uh, were fortunate to give me basically a, a 20 gigabyte Dropbox link, which contained all this stuff, including the oh, wow. full 13 minute version of the enjoy your lunch speech. So a lot of people have only seen three minutes of this speech. Uh, I've seen the full thing and the director's cut is even better. It's unreal. So I've used all this stuff in one chapter in the book, which basically talks about Ange's, uh, his speaking ability, the speeches he gives, the way he gives them, um, what players remember about them and just his, this magical ability he has to be able to talk to people and then make those people want to run through a brick wall for him which is one of the things I've always heard is one of his most legendary attributes. 
And I've never sat there and watched an Ange speech for myself in, in person, but I've watched a few on video now, and I'm like, I get it. I understand. This guy is, the way he, his rhetoric ability is out of control. So that's one of my favorite parts of the book. And the, cha- the chapter is called, Enjoy Your Lunch. <laughs> Very fitting. Um, I can't wait to, to real delve, delve into all of it. Uh, I think everyone else is as well. It's uh, out now, the book. So get yourself a copy um, and uh, delve into all things Ange. Vince, thanks again for joining me. Um, great great effort with the, the book and we can't wait to, uh, to read it. And also hopefully there's a, a second copy once Ange lifts a trophy with Tottenham, hopefully. Hopefully as well. I would appreciate that from the publisher as well if they order a second edition in that case. Uh, no dramas at all. But, mate, thanks for having me. Um, great opportunity to talk. And, uh, yeah, I encourage everyone to, you know, get behind all our Aussies overseas, but particularly Ange. Um, you know, what a what a representative we have for our game and our football. So um, get behind him and read the book as well if you want. Go for it. Definitely read the book. <laughs> thanks so much, <laughs> mate. Really appreciate you taking the time. Fantastic chatting with... Vince Rigari, a great guy, a former South Australian. Hopefully, uh, one day he'll come back to Adelaide. Um, I know he's got a soft spot still for us, um, but uh, it's great seeing what he does. And the book, Ange Ball, is uh, going to be a great read. Yeah, I just saw his article earlier last week about Alec Rusevsky and the MPL New South Wales about uh, Baker turned player, and he does both. Maybe the next one is about uh, real estate turned player and a couple of them in the MPLSA. <laughs> Maybe. There's a few of them, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's a great article, so make sure you read him, but also make sure you get a copy of that book, Ange Ball. It's out now, available in all bookstores and online. Well, we're going to be back with some more football talk. We've got the NPL to cover and press for time for the second to last time of the year. Let's uh, get to a short break. we back on the other side with more football talk. runs through you. Become your own hero. Presentation Night Looming? It's been a long season. You deserve a break. Let AV Plus elevate your corporate events with exceptional audio. Relax, recharge, and let them take care of the sound. AV Plus, your audio visual experts. Welcome back to the local game. It is a big show here today. Um, well, we've got the final wrap-up of the NPL. Let's get straight into it. Let's check out those results from the weekend. Uh, well, it was a new old draw. Metro Stars, Adelaide City. Um, a big game down there, so very tough. Uh, not Neither team could break into it, but Adelaide City had a, a couple of big chances as well. Yeah, I watched some of the, re- the replay of that one as well. They had a couple of big chances. I think a penalty shout as well, which was in there. But I think you see that from a lot of first legs as well. A lot of draws or maybe one nil. so... I'm sure that Metro Stars are more, probably the happier of the team to come away with uh, not conceding in that one. And now they're going to have a, a big game at home in front of the home fans to try and make the grand final, which they haven't done for quite a few years. So, Yeah, absolutely. And then Campbelltown City also a 2-0 win over Mobry Jets away from home. Um, that was a big uh, big game for them. Also, the red card kind of hurt, hurts them from Paul Wilson. Um, very disappointing from them in that sense. But uh, uh, that's a massive uh, in for them going home. At home this weekend. Yeah, they've had uh, some injury worries and suspension worries for some of those centre backs at Mobbury this year. So to see a red card like that, which is a bit contentious if you watch that back on replay, but otherwise, Campbelltown taking a strong lead coming home as well. And I'm sure they want to make a, uh, a night to remember there at Steve Woodcock to try and make the grand final as well. The fixtures coming up this weekend. Let's take a look at those. Friday night action Metro Stars, Adelaide City. It's new all going into this. Whoever wins now wins the, the, um, the thing. So there's no worrying about adding up numbers from the week prior, but uh, very easy when it's a new all draw in the first leg. Yeah, probably the closest rivals as well. And in the past, they've been big rivals in the, the final series as well. So it's going to be good to see that happen as well. And obviously, the Campbelltown and Mobbury are going to know the next day who's going to face them in the grand final. So it's interesting to see it play out this way. Absolutely. And also the Saturday afternoon action, um, Campbelltown City at home to Modbury Jets. They've played each other. This will be the fourth time, I think, this season. So it'll be exciting to see how this one plays out. But I think Campbelltown City going into it have the bigger advantage now, I think, as well. Yeah, 2-0 up already and in good form as well. The players come back from injury at the right time for them, Campbelltown. Unfortunately, maybe 
a couple of out at the moment for Modbury or suspensions as well. So they're going to have to uh, fight back. But we saw that last year in, in a tough away leg to Metro Stars after being down 2-1 in the first leg. So, Well, can't wait for all the action. Make sure you head down to watch on FSA Leagues. All right, let's head to Press for Time with Antonis Bagonis. Catching up with some South Australian action in the MPL Victoria Final Series, Johnny, because Tom Janakopoulos' Dandenong City became the first team ever to go from promotion to playing finals in the first season. But unfortunately for him, his side lost 4-1 against Oakley, with him actually being sent off on the day. Who scored one of the goals for Oakley? Asad Kasumovic. See you for another week, Johnny. Thanks, Antonis Pagonis from Front Page Football. Well, thank you, uh... Alessio for joining me. Very big episode. Very excited to have you on again. Yeah, I'm glad to be here as well. We're going to have a big week next week as well in your grand final show as well. But this week, make sure everybody watches the, the local league games. And it's going to be a couple of weekends to remember for some of these clubs. And I hope it's a yeah, big weekend before next week. Yep. Enjoy. Which game are you commentating? Uh, play for Vest Blue Eagles. So oh, that's a big one. Come away on. as well. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to be in, in around that crowd and see how loud it can yes. get. But they do a mean uh, Euros, I heard, down there as well. They just added that to the menu. So Schnitzel pack out. as well. Yeah. Go check that out. Good luck this weekend. All the best. Thanks again for joining me. See you next week. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Well, that's it now. We'll see you all again next week for the grand final show, the one-hour episode. Very excited for that next Thursday night on Kecko Media YouTube and then on demand next week. Uh, then also Friday night, a special time of 5.30 on Channel 44 and again 9 a.m. on Saturday right there on Channel 44. We're looking forward to it. All thanks to Macron Sports Hub, Adelaide, Shy Music and Entertainment, AV Plus, your audio experts, and 35 Sterling, who will be hosting us for that grand final show down in Theberton. Well, see you all next week. Have a great one. Thanks for tonight. We'll see you all. Have a great weekend. Football, it's going to be a big one.